Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. This morning I'll be reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25. And Jesus is talking here, and I'm going to start at verse 14. This is what it says. For it is just like a man about to go on a journey who called his own slaves and entrusted his possessions to them. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, each according to his own ability, and he went on his journey. Immediately the one who had received the five talents went and traded with them and gained five more talents. In the same manner, the one who had received the two talents gained two more. But he who had received the one talent went away and dug in the ground and hid his master's money. Now after a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. And the one who had received the five talents came up and brought five more talents, saying, Master, you entrusted five talents to me. See, I have gained five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful slave. You were faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. The one who had received the two talents came up and said, Master, you entrusted me two talents. See, I have gained two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful slave. You were faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one also who had received the one talent came up and said, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. And I was afraid and went away and hid your talent in the ground. See, you have what is yours. But his master answered and said to him, You wicked, lazy slave, you knew that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I scattered no seed. Then you ought to have put my money in the bank, and on my arrival I would have received my money back with interest. Therefore take away the talent from him and give it to the one who has the ten talents. For to everyone who has shall more be given, and he shall have an abundance. But from the one who does not have, even what he does have shall be taken away. And cast out the worthless slave into the outer darkness, in the place there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Pray with me. Lord, among these many words this morning, help us to hear you, the word, the word of life, because it's that, that's the life that we need this day. May your spirit live in and, and through us. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Jesus starts off the story this morning with... The words, for it is just like. Well, in order to understand the story, you have to know what the it is. The it is the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. That's what Jesus talked about more than anything else. Sometimes people think it's other things, but it's the kingdom of God. That was his number one favorite sermon topic. And it's it's this kingdom that Jesus came to, to usher in with his life and his death on the cross and his resurrection. It's a kingdom that, well... It's a kingdom where the broken are made whole. It's a kingdom where the lost are found. It's a kingdom where 
where God can be seen and heard in every turn. And Jesus not only told stories about it, he lived it. We saw it in his life. We saw it, and we still see it in his crucifixion. We see it in his resurrection. And it's, as we say in the Lord's Prayer, it's not just a kingdom to come, but that his will is done on earth. His kingdom comes on earth, and it also comes in heaven. Well, that's, that's the it that's being spoken of here. The, the kingdom of God is like a man who goes on a journey. Now, when you go on a journey, when you take vacation, you don't take everything with you. No, you take enough money and maybe a little more for the vacation in case you get in trouble, but you, you leave most of it back. Well, that's what he did. He left some with his three servants. The first one, he said he left five talents. Now, we don't use talents these days, but a talent is a weight, a weight of silver. It's 70 pounds of silver. One talent is 70 pounds of silver. It was considered to be what a person would earn over their lifetime. So this one slave received 350 pounds of silver. This was a gracious plenty. This was a a tremendous abundance. Five lifetimes worth of silver. Another he gave two talents. 140 pounds of silver. And the one that he left one talent, we don't need to th- think, well, all he had was one little talent. That was 70 pounds of silver. That was a lifetime's worth of, or, or a lifetime's worth of, of silver that he received there. And then he went on his journey. Well, we know how the story goes. When he came back, the one who had the five talents, he He gained five more talents. Doesn't go into detail how he did that. Maybe what he did was he went out and he he bought more sheep. And he used that herd to to breed and to grow, to double in size. And he doubled what his master had given him. Then the one who had received the two talents did the same thing. But we know the story isn't just about the five and the two talents. it's, It's very closely about the one who had one talent, gracious plenty, a great abundance. He took that one talent and he buried it. He hid it. He sat on it and gave it to his master at, at, the, at his return. Well, the master doesn't tell him what a good job he did. No, he calls him wicked and lazy. Well, the point of the story is very clear. There's expectation. There's expectation that we're to do the best we can with what we have where we are. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. Doing the best we can with what we have where we are. William B. McLean tells a story about when he was in Korea. He had spent some time there and he met a tailor. The tailor's name was Smitty Lee. And he had never met a Korean named Smitty. So he asked the the tailor, he said, is this a common name in Korea? You're the only Smitty that I've met. And the tailor said, no, it's not common at all. He said, during the Korean War, there was a soldier from Virginia that saved my life. And this is the way the tailor put it. It said, he saved my life, I took his name. He saved my life, I took his name. And that's what Jesus did for you and for me. That he took all those things that would conquer us, all those things that would destroy us, all those things that would just rub us into dust, and he nailed them to the cross to kill them, to take away their power once and for all. And when he rose from the grave, he gave that, that, that same power to you and to me, that the power of the, the, the risen Christ would live in us. That not only do we do the best we can, we do the best He can as He lives His life through us. The way 1 Corinthians 3.16 puts it, it says, Do you not know that you are the temple of God and the Spirit of God dwells in you? The Spirit of God, the risen Christ, dwells in, in you and me to give us power that we don't have. Power enough to make the broken whole. Power enough where the lost are found. Power enough where we have eyes that see. A 
a kingdom where, where, where God's, God's face, his, his hands, they, sh- they show up at every turn. That it's a power that, well, the way Paul put it, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. That we do the best we can, and there's no shortage of power of what, what God can do through us. We do the best we can. We do the best we can with, with what we have. I read a story about a 38-year-old washwoman. She loved to go to the movies. And on the big screen, she would see the, the beautiful actresses, and she said, oh, if I had beauty like that, what I could do. She'd hear the singers sing, and she said, oh, if I had a voice like those women, what, could I, what would I be able to do? I'd be a, a lot more than a washwoman. And that's when somebody gave her a book. And in the book, it pretty much told what the theme is here. In the book, it said that each one of us were given gifts. And that we needed to look and see what God had given us. Not what God had given somebody else. Not point to somebody else's gift and and long and wish that we had the gift that they had. But look to see what God had given us. Well, I saw an interview with her on YouTube. And she began to, to think about when she was in high school, she was known as the funniest girl in school. So at 38 years old, she decided to become a comedian. Well, to, to start being a comedian at 38 years old is unheard of. She said people thought she was crazy. Not only that, in her day, that for a woman to become a comedian, that was unheard of as well. But at the height of her career, Phyllis Diller, you may have heard her name before, she was earning a million dollars a year. Not going on the gifts of someone else, but the gifts that God had given her. Now, the point of the story is not that we all become celebrity comedians or even celebrity millionaires. The point of the story is that God's given great riches to all of us. The way Paul put it says... My God shall supply all your needs according to His riches in glory in Christ Jesus. And what are the riches of God? They're beyond any of our imaginations. That it's not that we just have enough, that we've been given gracious plenty. We've been given great abundance. Not just enough to slide by, but the gifts of God to you and to me. It's a gracious plenty. It's more than we can imagine. It's enough to a point to point to a God that can, can make the broken whole. It's enough where we can point to a God that, that helps the lost to be found. It's enough where you and I are able to see the hand of God, to hear the voice of God at every turn. A little while back, I was standing in line at Home Depot, struck up a conversation with a woman, and I invited her to our church. Well, she looked away for a minute, and her eyes <laughs> squinted like she was trying to see something in the far distance. And then she turned to me, she said, oh, I know that church. That I went to job networking there, and you gave me clothes for an interview, good clothes. And then she, she, she pointed to the person next to her in line and said, you need to go to his church. They gave me clothes for an interview, good clothes, and I got the job. Well, she was talking about our job networking. Every month, over 300 people, over 300 people, we help them find jobs. We connect them with employers. We help them on their resumes. We help them in the interview process. And before COVID, every month... That we would meet here as, as a faith-based job networking group and together, in small groups, they'd come and, and share the journey together with a meal. Well, we're, we're still doing that. It's online, it's virtual right now, but we're reaching over 300 people every month. We're putting our little, our riches, that 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 God, the gifts that God has given to to you and me and as a church. We're reaching out to folks who 
who need a job. But it's not only those who need a job. We're reaching out to those who need food. And every week, right here, we're feeding over a thousand people a week. But it's not just for those who need food. That together, we're putting to what God has given us to, to help children who have English as a second language, tutoring them to read. Well, before COVID, it was person to person, but now it's virtually online. Volunteers from this church reaching out to let folks know that they matter to God and that they matter to us too. So I'm not at all, I'm not at all ashamed or afraid to ask folks to give to give generously because God has given generously to you and to me a great abundance, a gracious plenty. Our 2021 pledge campaign is starting right now. Just like you make a budget at home, we have to make a budget here at the church that will be able to continue to reach out beyond the walls of this church, to let folks know that they, they matter to God and they matter to us, to continue to help people find jobs, to continue to to help people find food, to continue to help children to read. And it goes way beyond that, that we put what the gifts that God has given us, we put it together. We put it together with what, what God's already doing in the world. And we do more than, than bury and hide and sit on what He's given us that we do the best we can with what we have. And I want to invite you to be a part of that. If you're at home, you can look at rumc.com slash pledge and make a pledge for 2021. If you're here, there, there are cards on the, the, the prayer rail, and you can take one of those cards home and prayerfully consider what it is that God's calling you to do. To do something more than to bury, to hide, and to sit on His great riches. Well, we're called to do the best we can with what we have. But the last thing I want to say is, is we're called to do the best we can with what we have where we are. You know, when, in, in Genesis, when God created Adam, it says He formed him from the dust of the ground. But that wasn't enough. It goes on to say that God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and then he became a living being. Well, that's a thread that goes from the beginning of the Bible to the end of it, that it's that connection with God, that breath of God, that spirit of God living in Adam, that's what gave him life. And when Jesus rose from the grave, that's the story that's told, that Jesus met with his disciples, and it says that he, he opened his mouth, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit, that there's a connection, a connection with the Spirit of God living in, in you and me that gives life. It's a life where the broken is, is made whole. It's a life where the lost are found. It's a life where we, we see, we see God at every turn. We see his hands, we hear his voice at every turn. Well, it doesn't stop right there. They're just Me and God, we got a good thing going, and everybody else, we just really don't care a whole lot about them. No, the Bible doesn't stop when God breathed into Adam. God says it's not good for the man to be alone. I will create a helper suitable for him. And that word helper, a lot of times folks think, well, that's somebody, you know, to kind of pick up my socks and underwear, do the, that kind of thing. That's not the, what the word helper there means. Literally, it means Savior. That you and I were made to be in connection with one another. And when God made Eve, he did it from the rib of Adam. That they, that's how connected they were. Bone of bone and flesh of flesh. That none of us were made to be alone. Now, there's a, there are a lot of voices out there that are trying to convince us during this time of pandemic that it, it's okay to be alone, to be hidden, to be buried, and to sit by ourselves. We were never created for that. 
But the Bible doesn't stop right there either. That it goes on to tell us that Adam and Eve were put in the garden to cultivate and keep it. And the word in Hebrew there is abat. And abat doesn't mean just turn over the soil and throw a few seeds in there. No, abat means to work and serve. That you and I, we were made to work and serve. That's how connected we are to be, yes, to the world, yes, to one another, and yes, in that relationship with God, to work and to serve, to do more than, than, than bury and hide and sit. And I want to invite you to, to do more with what God has given you than to just bury and hide and sit on it. I don't want to invite you to take part in what God's doing in the world. To make a pledge to our 2021 pledge campaign, be the light. That this world is a, is a place that needs the light of Jesus Christ, and, and you and I can be a part of that. But we can't do it when we bury and hide and sit on it. Now, I know from, some folks say, well, you know, the church always, that's what it's after. It's always after your money. Well, the church just isn't always after your money. But I will say, what Jesus said, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And if you're sitting on your treasure, guess where your heart is? That didn't sound much like an invitation, did it? But it was. It's an invitation to give your heart to Jesus Christ. Not to bury, not to hide, and not to sit. To reach out. Because there's a world that needs to know who Jesus is. We're all called to do the best we can. Where we are. With what we have. And Lord knows that's gracious plenty. More than an abundance. Pray with me. Lord, we need, we need your power to do what it is you've called us to do. To do more than sit. To do more than bury, more than hide what you've given us. We need your power to do that. And I'm thankful that you aren't hesitant at all to give your power. That your power, well, it supplies all our needs according to your riches. Your power, it, it makes your home in us. We're, broken things are made whole. And it's your power that declares that lost really can be found. It's your power that gives us eyes to see what. Lord, to see you at every turn, we need that power in our lives this day. And I also know that there, there are folks within the sound of my voice this morning that have, have, not, have not given of themselves, given of their abundance, given of their gifts, given of their treasure to you. I know there are folks within the sound of my voice that have, have said, no, I, I don't have enough. So they've dug and they've hid and they've sat on the great abundance that you've given them. Lord, you came for hearts. And too often our hearts and our wallets are connected. Grant us grace enough to give to give from our, our wallets that you might receive our hearts as well. I thank you ahead of time for what you've done, and I thank you for what you will do. And I'm thankful for this church, that you've used it to give hope, to heal, to make whole those who are broken. You've used it to, 
to make found those who are lost. You've used this church to help folks see, to see you, to hear you at every turn. May we never take that for granted. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. My name's Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Thank you for joining us this morning. We're a church that's a place of community and faith, and we're a welcoming church. I hope that you experience that online, but not only online. My hope is that you experience it through our Facebook page. But not only that, once we meet together in person, we're at 814 Mimosa Boulevard, and I hope you'll come and experience it in person. We're a welcoming church. We're a biblical church. And we're a compassionate church. It's a place of community and faith where we help people live a Christ-centered life. And my hope is that you'll come and be a part of it. Thank you for joining us.